Hi there, all right. I decided I'm going to do a series of tutorials based on how to paint and draw flames and fire. I've been fascinated by fire for quite a number of years. I've done a few paintings and drawings inspired by it as a natural element, and I just find it's, it's endlessly fascinating to watch and to observe. And so I'm going to, on this tutorial, I'm going to start quite simple. I'm going to start with probably the simplest form of fire you will find, and that is the obviously the candle flame or the kind of matchstick flame. So it's a very simple form, but even within that simple form, there are certain things that you can apply to more complex versions of fire. So when beginning to paint a, a candle flame, perhaps the most important color to start with would be a blue. Now it's only a, a small part of the actual flame itself, but I do think that it's a crucial part. Now I'm gonna turn the opacity right down and the brush size is not gonna be very big as well. I'll just remind you what brush I'm actually using as well. I'm using an airbrush, a soft brush. So I don't want any hard edges to any of the lines that I'm actually creating. It has to be very, very soft. And I've got the opacity on the brush set right down so that any marks, any shapes I'm going to be making are only going to be added very subtly and with a lot of, you know, intention behind it, really. I'm not going to arrive at accidental forms here. So I want to build it up very gradually, very smoothly and then start to generate the, the right kind of effect and look to the flame. Now generally, it's only, the blue's only going to appear at the bottom part of the, an actual candle flame. But I'm just, I'm starting with the overall flame shape anyway, because it just guides where to do everything else really. So there's going to be a lot more concentration of the blue near the bottom. And I have actually, if you'll notice, done it on a, a separate layer from the background. So at any time, you know, I can change and adjust it and blur it uh, or smudge it and it won't affect the background. Now obviously I'm working digitally so, you know, there are certain things that I can do like that that you wouldn't really be able to do very easily on a, well, in a traditional medium in traditional format. Having said that, in terms of the observations and where to put things, there are certain things that obviously apply regardless of the medium you're using. So. I hope this is still useful even if you're not necessarily a digital artist. So as you can see, I'm sort of making the, the blue stronger on the actual edges of it, but I'm not neglecting to put some blue in and around the bottom area here. I guess it's a little bit like a, an atmosphere, if you, if you imagine like the atmosphere around the planet. As it gets towards the edges, it, you can see the atmosphere more clearly at that point, but it, you still get the haze sort of fading in and out around the rest of it too. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to perhaps intensify the, the blue that appears in this area. If at any point you seem to be getting like, depends on the effect you want, I guess, if you want a kind of sketch version, but I want a, a slightly more sort of photo real kind of impression of the flame. So I'm building up very gradually, I want smooth transitions, and smooth blending, and there you go. And even at this stage, I think the blue really counts for an awful lot in, in how to construct a flame. So I've not done any, any of the other colours yet, but I think that the impact of the blue is quite strong. Very important part of creating a flame. So here you go. I'm going to move to a different colour now. I haven't got it pre-selected, so I'm just going to choose it now. I'm going to move to pretty much like a primary orange, a very warm, very strong orange. And I'm going to turn the opacity down again before I go any further, so that if in case I'm making mistakes, I'll probably do this in another layer. Again, I'm only building this up very, very gradually. I can use the smudge tool later, but in order to minimize the amount of softening I will have to do later, I'm just sort of building up extremely incrementally. So you can see I've, I've faded from the blue up to the orange and then I've filled in most of the orange at the top. Now I'm just going to narrow my orange brush and I'm going to make sure that I've got a, a sort of finer version of the orange. It's going to sort of overtake where the blue was thickening up on the outside or becoming more intense along the edge. Now the, the orange is going to take its place about sort of halfway up. So initially as it's going to come in here, it's going to be contained with inside the blue, but then it's as you go up, it's going to sort of overtake it and become the dominant edge colour, if you like. I've got most of the basic 
warm color in there. I'm going to go now more towards the, the yellow end. And again, I'm going to fade it in very gradually. I'm now going to push it even further towards the, the whiter end of the yellows. So you can see almost that it's it's got an outer layer of blue that disappears the higher it goes, goes up. Then there's like an orange that disappears. And there's a yellow contained within that. And then within that you get the sort of whitest end of the spectrum as well. So in a sense it works as sort of rings of, of colour. I'm going to turn the opacity up a little bit now. So I identify the kind of the brightest sort of colour, almost the brightest colour, and then I'm just going to work on sort of fading that in a bit more really. It does need to go almost as bright to the top, but probably the brightest point is going to be somewhere in the centre of that flame. So I'm not using the smudge tool yet, I probably will use it a little bit just to refine, but at the moment I'm just doing it manually and just building up gradually with a soft brush so it creates that sense of fading in and out. I've decided that I need a bit more warm colour, so I'm just going to place another layer between the blue and the, the other layer that I've created, and I'm going to return to the, the warm colour. So a slightly more warm colour I'm introducing back in. Just by putting it as a background layer, it can sort of subtly feed into the, the image. Well, perhaps on this layer, I'll, I think I'll probably create another layer actually, because you never get just get the the actual flame itself, especially if it's kind of like a, you know emulating the look of a photograph. You would tend to get a bit of a hazy halo kind of effect. So I'm going to whack the size of the brush up, turn the opacity up slightly, and then a few clicks underneath there, you'll kind of get the, the hazing effect. In fact, I might just do a bigger version of that, like so. And there you see you've got the, the general sort of haze around it too. I'm going to return to the top layer now. I still feel like I, I need to go, well, definitely not that wide, but I still feel like I need to go whiter for the brightest point in the flame. There are now fine tuning things that I couldn't do. So for example on that, the uh, the halo effect, I'm just going to then go on the Gaussian blur, I'm going to soften that slightly, so the effect is still there but it's a much softer version of it. I can also go on to the different layers and I can then start to again work with the Gaussian blur, just soften it slightly and then I, I might do more controlled kind of blurring, I'm just going to maybe blur it by sort of 20% perhaps, and whether you can even see the difference on camera, but it just softens it up a little bit before you then start manually blurring. So I'm just going to again soften this up slightly. You don't want to go too far because it's just going to lose all definition. Maybe sort of 10%, 15% perhaps. Yeah, something in that region is adequate. And now if I move to the, the smudge tool, I can zoom in. And I can begin, just double check I've got the levels right, so I don't want to do too big a brush, I don't want to totally obliterate the image, I want to make sure that the, the strength of the blur is not too strong either, although strong enough that you can actually see something happen. And I can perhaps start to just sort of blur some of these things in. Now it depends how kind of, just how realistic you want to get really, and if it's a, a relatively small part of a, a much larger image then obviously it doesn't need to be as smoothly blended in perhaps but that's essentially the kind of the look I'm going for I could work onto the uh, the wick perhaps I might decide that it's, it doesn't really go high enough into the image so I may wish to uh, work further into that for example on a wick you may find that uh, there are certain reds coming in at the end of a wick subtly. Let's return to the orangey kind of colours. 
and you might also get the uh, the effect that the the actual flame is having on it because that effect even on the wick you're gonna have the effect of the fire or the light rather impacting the actual wick itself so you might choose to add some texture into it some detail onto the wick something like that you may decide that you know because there's no there's no exact level of this you might decide you want a little bit more blue I really quite like the blue effect so I might strengthen that up slightly make it a bit more vivid like so okay but that's the general effect I'm going to be doing more of these uh, tutorials I'm going to be working on burning embers bigger flames where the flames are sort of you know rippling and creating the more interesting kind of forms that they do. So please subscribe. I've done tutorials on how to paint lava and I've also been working on all sorts of other types of tutorials. This is the first part. There's going to be other parts. If there's any more, then expect it to appear on the screen right now. If there isn't, it's because this is only just a, a recent video and I'm yet to do the other videos. But please subscribe. Please check out my other videos. Uh, I'd much appreciate if you leave me a comment and a like and perhaps even a share. All right, till next time. Take care.